Skull Island is the home of Titanus Kong, the Iwi people, and dozens of other creatures unlike anything seen anywhere else on the planet. Yet with the events of Godzilla vs. Kong, we find out that the island is now the site of a massive unending storm, putting the island and its inhabitants at risk. In the film, Eileen Andrews says that Gia is the last of her tribe, but we have conflicting information from the Godzilla vs. Kong novelization and in the official prequel graphic novel to the film, Kingdom Kong. So let's take a look at both to find out all that we can about the fate of Skull Island's Iwi tribe. In the novel by Greg Keyes, we get a flashback through Gia during the flooding of her home. The rain is pounding down constantly and lightning, described by her as rain snakes, are relentlessly striking the ground. At the beginning of the storm, a large mudslide ends up taking out a large group of the villagers. Afterwards, Eileen tries to convince the remaining Iwi to relocate, either to the biodome or somewhere else, but they end up refusing. She would return later for another try, but by then, they're all gone without a trace. Even the Iwi village itself at this point has already been flooded and the ancient wall that kept out the predators was now filled with debris becoming a dam, holding the waters as they once kept the enemies out. Gia and a small group of survivors are now fleeing for higher ground, running from the water and the island's dangerous creatures like the Siren Jaw who end up killing much of her small group. Gia and her sister are the only ones to make it out of the water, but the levels are still rising, and an unseen torrent ends up sweeping her sister away just as she lifts Gia up to the safety of the trees. Even so, the water still continues to rise, and moments before her possible death, Gia is saved by Kong. Now again, in the book, just like in the movie, Eileen does say that Gia is the last of the Iwi, noting that she hasn't seen a member of the tribe outside of Gia since the mudslides, making her think that they've gone extinct. However, I'd also point out that the book explains some of the early traditions and stories of the Iwi, and in them, we learn that the Iwi, along with Kong's own kind, originated down in the Hollow Earth. The stories tell of man and Titan alike coming up to the surface and then retreating back to the safety below in harsh times. This could explain humans surviving things like asteroid impacts and ice ages, as well as the long slumbers of the Titans but it could also give us another way for some of the Iwi to survive the flooding of the island. Some of them could have gone below, and yes, much of the caverns below the island would of course be flooded or flooding, but not all of them would be. Some of them would have air pockets, and some of them could be cut off from the water altogether. Not to mention, if Kong saved Gia earlier, he could have possibly saved others as well. But what does the tie-in prequel comic, considered canon by Legendary, have to say about the fate of the Iwi tribe? Well, in Kingdom Kong, Kong is seen fighting it out with Kamazots, an evil bat-like titan challenging him for his alpha status. Kong, however, with Monarch's help, is able to defend his home and defeat Kamazots, but not before the storm has already doomed the island. Yet here, after the battle, we see Monarch using Ospreys to evacuate the survivors to some unknown location. Houston Brooks, who was running things on the island, felt guilty for Monarch's role in the destruction of Skull Island, so he puts Eileen in charge, making her responsible for Kong and the island as long as it's still above water. So both the film and the novel have Eileen stating that Gia is the last of her kind, with only hints of the Iwi's possible survival. But in Kingdom Kong, we get right down to it, and we see the remaining Iwi actually being evacuated from the island. And as it turns out, a similar evacuation scene, using ships instead of Ospreys, was at one point considered for use in the film, as seen in this piece of concept art. So what here is canon to the films? Novels are a tricky thing canon-wise in any sci-fi universe. Some people see them as canon, while others see them as existing in their own continuity. You either like the extra stuff that's not shown in the films, like the Muto's EMP affecting Godzilla's atomic blast, and Godzilla vs. Kong's mention of two Ghidorah skulls being used in the creation of Mechagodzilla, or you have them as alternate but separate takes on the films. However, the graphic novels like Kingdom Kong and Godzilla Dominion are considered to be canon to the films, and Kingdom Kong shows Iwi survivors being evacuated from the island. So there are Iwi out there somewhere. 
Hopefully they're living peacefully on some regular boring old island. Although I will admit, as soon as I started to think about some new island, the G-Fan in me started to think about Monster Island. This could be a perfect chance to bring the famous island or islands into the Monsterverse. Unfortunately though, it's probably more likely that Monarch will just end up putting him on some fake island for study. Now as a tie-in video, I've already made another one on the novel and comics explanation for the storm that wrecked Skull Island and caused all this mess in the first place. And no, it's not the storm that circled the island for years. Without giving it away, I'll just say that it has something to do with Kamazots, and it's definitely worth the watch if you haven't read these books yet. So do you wish the movie would have taken a moment to talk more about the fate of the Iwi? I have a bunch of other great video ideas like this on things left out of the film that are covered in the tie-in books that I'll cover in future videos. So thanks for watching guys. Your likes, shares, comments, and subscriptions go a long way towards helping the channel grow. Take care, and I hope to see you next time.